Note, the meeting is being recorded. I'm the chair of the search committee, I just want to make sure everybody in the room is aware of the search committee. Donnie Van Sant is a graduate student that's serving on the committee. Google. Alicia Mall, Rachel Alverson is an undergraduate student who's serving on the committee. Jeff Hickey, who has a class right now, is also serving on the committee. And Max Dakins in Idaho Falls is also serving on the committee. So without any further <laughs> delay, we're going to turn the time over to Dr. Baller, who's going to do a presentation, and then this session is designed as an open forum to conduct questions and answers with the public. <laughs> okay, I'm, thank you very much, JD. Uh, I'm very much like you guys, so um, I'm used to talking in 50 minute segments, so I gotta use my notes so I don't talk for more than 20 minutes this morning. I'd like to do three things this morning. First of all, I'd like to uh, uh, tell you just a little bit about my background. Uh, secondly, what my priority goals would be for the Environmental Science Program should you select me as director. And third, I'd like to show you just a little bit of uh, the type of work I do, some assessment work I've done with the freshman Environmental Science 101 class. So with that, I'm going to get going. Uh, just a little bit about me. Most of you know me. Uh, I got my PhD uh, back in 1980 uh, from North Carolina State University in Raleigh. I've been here at the University of Idaho since that time. UMI was my first job, so I've been here 34 years, 8 months, and so many days. Um, over that 30 year, 34 year span, uh, I've spent time primarily as a researcher, uh, primarily as a teacher, and primarily as an outreach person. So I think if you looked at that 34 year career, you would see that I would split up about a third research, a third teaching, and a third outreach. Um, just as far as productivity, I've published 100 uh, referee journal articles. 186 extension type bulletins that are refereed, and I've given almost 800 presentations on the behalf of the University of Idaho. Uh, from a grant con uh, contract standpoint, I brought in over a million dollars, uh, over 11 million dollars as lead uh, PI on various projects. Uh, probably, uh, if you would have to say what the most important thing I've done. Uh, in the last 34 years is that from the year 2000 to 2012, I served as a regional uh, project, a principal investigator for the Pacific Northwest Regional Water Resources Program uh, that consisted of a project done by the five land grant use in universities in the Pacific Northwest, the University of Idaho, Washington State University, Oregon State University, the University of Alaska, and Northwest Indian College in Bellingham. I served as the PI, the regional coordinator. I was responsible, was responsible for securing the grant funds and distributing the funds uh, to everybody involved and to make sure that there were significant outcomes from the project. Um, I've completed 39 graduate students in my career here at the University of Idaho. Uh, 19 of the uh, degrees have been in environmental science, 18 have been in soil science, and two have been in plant science. I've been involved in the environmental science program since it was established in 1993. Fall of 1993 is when the program uh, came into being. Uh, at that time, uh, I asked Dr. Von Braun if I could develop an introductory course for environmental science, which I did, and I taught for the first time in the fall of 1993. And a year later, I developed an introductory lab course, uh, Environmental Science 102. We had or had no lab facilities, and the goal of the uh, the lab was to use the field as our laboratory. So it was a field. It was a course that consisted of field trips. Uh, since fall of 1993, I taught this class. I taught it continuously. I think I'm in my 46th time teaching this course, and in that time, I've had over 8,400 students take the class. Um, I'm on the environmental science core team. I've been on there for a long time, primarily because I teach the introductory uh, environmental science course. And I've also been part of the distance education program asso uh, uh, associated with environmental science. Uh, I was on a couple SBOE grants uh, to turn um, some of our existing coursework into distance education opportunities. When I thought about this, uh, 
director position, I try to think about what would be my goals that are a little bit unique and or different compared to previous directors. And I came up with four goals. And I'd just like to go through those goals, tell you what I think my priorities are. One, I think that uh, I have a high priority for increasing the emphasis in our Bachelor of Science undergraduate program in environmental science. I think that would be my number one goal. To do that, if you have to take a look at enrollment trends, enrollment in environmental science uh, as an undergraduate program has stagnated, stagnated or slightly declined in the last four years. I think it's time to reinvigorate that enrollment, bring enrollment up, and to try and do it through several avenues. And there's no magic bullet here. A lot of this just has to be traditional, hard work effort in these areas. Improving good student recruiting, enhancing our course offerings, uh, increasing our internship opportunities for students, that would help with retention, and to increase our scholarship opportunities. Uh, as a program, we have virtually very limited scholarship money, and that is really a disadvantage for us as for recruiting students. We need to greatly increase that pool. My second priority would be to expand and or develop our distance BS program. We already have a distance program that's centered out of Idaho Falls and um, College of Northern Idaho. And, uh, but I would like to see us expand it. I would like to see us develop a two plus two program, two years at a community college and two years taking online courses from the University of Idaho. And I'd like us to develop articulation agreements with all community colleges in the Western United States to do this. Up to now, we've been working in Northern Idaho and Southeastern Idaho. I'd like to expand this. Eventually, I would like to have an entirely online degree in environmental science that is offered using only University of Idaho courses. This presents challenges to us right now because we don't have the chemistry courses online, we don't have the math courses or the statistics courses online, but this is a goal that I would like to work toward. And my, my visualization is that I would like to see us have 250 plus students in the program in distance programs. I'd like to see our enrollment up to that number. It sounds very large, uh, but I think it's something that's doable. Uh, we have just recently signed a contract uh, with Central Administration to develop nine more environmental science courses online as a start of this 2 plus 2 program. So uh, the university has committed that money uh, to do that. Third, I think an uh, area that we have fallen down in the last few years is faculty engagement. Uh, we have a lot of faculty who are on paper part of the environmental science program, yet they are not very engaged in the program. Not, necessar not necessarily through their own fault. We have at least 70 faculty that say they are part of the environmental science program, um, but a lot of them are not engaged. And uh, there are a lot of reasons for them not being engaged, but I, I see one of the reasons they're not engaged is they just simply aren't asked to do certain things. And I think it's important to come in here and create at least one monthly unifying activity that would engage our environmental science faculty on a monthly basis to give them an opportunity for input and to help in the decision making. I, I see that as very important. And then finally, I think the other area is uh, I would like to see our program emphasize a couple additional areas, uh, a couple underserved areas, um, energy and waste management. The university does a, our environmental science program in the University of Idaho do excellent jobs in sustainability, water resources, and natural resources. Those are three areas of environmental science. But for incoming students, I think two very exciting areas are energy and waste management. So again, we're currently strong in water sustainability soils, I'll have to say that, a couple of soil scientists there. Uh, we're strong there in natural resources. These are University of Idaho strengths. 
I think there is a demand for coursework and leadership in the state in waste management and in Idaho Falls. If you just take a look at Idaho Falls, we have a lot of faculty there with a lot of expertise and energy that we need to tap. Energy and waste management are two of the big areas that the University of Idaho should be hitching their wagon to and uh, moving into the future. Uh, I'm not saying environmental science is the area that should necessarily be lead. I think there are other departments on campus that would lead these areas, but the environmental science program should be part of it, and we should be developing courses that students want to take. So those are my four goals that I would uh, pursue as director. I wanted to show you a little bit of my research data that I think that's relevant. I never show it to anybody. I talk about it at international meetings, but no one on campus ever sees it. And, um, I want to show you some work I've done on this, an assessment study in Environmental Science 101. Now remember, I've got a captive audience. I've had over 8,000 students take the class, so I could bring a lot of data out of these students if I did it right. Uh, and I'm really interested in measuring the impact of the Environmental Science 101 course on student views of environmental issues. So what I did in the fall of 1993 is I developed a, an assessment or a survey where I made 32 statements about environmental issues and I asked students to either strongly agree, agree, disagree, strongly disagree, or have no opinion about my statement. I asked the students to do this on the first day of class and then on dead week I repassed out the same survey and I had them do it again. So basically I wanted to measure if they changed opinions about environmental issues. It was a way for me to assess whether the class was doing what I wanted it to do, if I was making an impact. So again, the students could circle one of five answers. In addition to that, I collected information like what was the student's major, what was their gender, uh, things like that, so I could put a little bit of demographic data to that. Uh, since today the water summit is going on on campus, I wanted to show you just three water questions that I asked students. Uh, made the statement, in the USA, water pollution has become worse over the last 25 years. Uh, in the Pacific Northwest, water conservation should be emphasized in homes and yards. Uh, question 36, in cities of the Pacific Northwest, drinking water uh, from the tap in your home is safe to drink. And I asked students uh, their opinions about that. Were those statements accurate or not? So basically, I had this 32-question survey, and it got expanded to up to 50, depending on the semester I had it. But I had 32 questions that I asked for 45 semesters. And uh, same questions, 45 semesters, fall 1993 through fall 2004. 7,485 students completed both surveys, the first day of class and the last day of class. And I had about 500 surveys that weren't completed by students at uh, both times, so they aren't counted in this. So 94% of the students uh, in the class actually responded to the survey both times. And I collected gender, year, uh, student major, and year in college data on this. And tons of data. Uh, it was analyzed by uh, SAS, paired t tests because I had a beginning and an end point and I looked at orthogonal contrasts were appropriate. I looked at main effects, and I looked at interactions. Did gender affect an answer? Did survey year, did student major, did year in college affect an answer? And I just wanted to share with you just a, a couple pieces of data that I think that are very interesting. Statement at the top, in the USA, water pollution has become worse over the last 25 years. Uh, the responses, strongly agree or agree, strongly disagree or disagree, and neutral. First week of class, you take a look at that statement, water pollution has become worse, 60.4% uh, agreed with that statement. Last week of the class, only 20% agreed with that statement. Well, that meant me talking about the Clean Water Act and, and water quality results from the Department of Environmental Quality sunk through. And I got something out of the class, one of the things that I wanted students to get. Um, if I were to do it by gender, same question, but these are the students, the students that responded either agreed or strongly agreed with the statement. 
uh, there's a gender difference. Um, um, female students were much more likely, three out of four of them were more likely to say that water pollution has become worse in the United States in the last 25 years. Only about half of males said that. But by the end of the class, only a fifth of the students were saying that. Not much of a gender difference by the end of the class. So I've got all this rich data from this study that I think is very good. If I looked at major, and I separated this by 18 majors, and I'm just showing you three majors here, uh, students that agreed or strongly agreed with the statement that water pollution has become worse in the last 25 years. Uh, if you look at agriculture and business students, about half of them said it's become worse. 80% of humanities students said it's become worse. Um, and if you take a look at the end of the semester, uh, significant drop, but still humanities students were a little bit more skeptical, saying that I don't think things have changed that much. So basically for every major, I've got this data. I think that's really interesting to see in an assessment. Uh, another question, in the Pacific Northwest, water conservation should be emphasized in homes and yards. Uh, before the semester began, only 20% agreed, 40% uh, disagreed. By the end of the semester, you saw about half was saying it was a problem. It should be considered. Uh, and only 30% said not. And this is something that I, think I wanted to emphasize in the class too, that we do have some water issues in our urban areas here in the Pacific Northwest. So um, my assessment of the course is it did something I wanted. Um, something that I am able to do that no one else is really able to do is I, I look at time. This issue has become more important over time. Back in, uh, after the, at the end of the course, back in 94 and 95, 42% of the students saying uh, that this is something that's important now. Uh, when I get up to the last four years, two thirds of the students are saying it's important. So this issue has increased in prominence with time. Other issues have faded. Uh, things like population issues have faded a little bit. Uh, the one thing that I think is really interesting, uh, if you're interested in natural resources, students change their mind about lots of things. Population, energy, water, waste management. But students never change their mind on biodiversity and natural resource issues. They had an opinion at the beginning of the course. No matter what they saw in the course, they had the same opinion at the end. And we also had a couple other interesting things. I, 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 I make a statement about a global issue, and then I make a statement about a regional issue. And it's interesting on how students see things different globally and regionally. For instance, I made a statement that uh, tropical rainforest should be preserved in the world regardless of the cost. And 80% of students would agree with that. And then I'd say uh, old growth forests in the Pacific Northwest must be uh, preserved regardless of cost. And only a third of students would agree with that. So once it came down to regional and affecting people on a day-to-day -day basis, they were a lot less likely. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of show you that data because I've got a lot of really good assessment uh, data from that class, and that's something that I'm really interested in. So um, that's just a tip of the iceberg of some of the data we've been able to generate from the introductory course. Uh, that's been one of the pluses of me running the course for a long time, is I can see changes over time, and I can add new questions as things go. So uh, thank you very much for your time and attention, and uh, I guess I'm here to answer any questions. Graduated is a difference in like most of them are freshmen that they take your class, or is that not true? Uh, you probably end up with about 60% of the freshmen. Uh -huh. But there's also a big pool of seniors who, you know, they put off taking their science course until the end. And I, I know it's very hard to get a hold of them after they graduate, but the sustainability of some of these attitudes once they are out in the real world with jobs and lifestyle choices they make. i just curious what kind of uh, attitudes they have on these same questions. Uh, I think that would be a really good follow-up. Unfortunately, I don't have the original surveys because I shredded them 
afterwards, so I couldn't oh, go back and hold names. Yeah, I can't yeah. go back. Go back and do that. Bob, the, the goals that you uh, laid out seem fairly ambitious. What, what do you see as the biggest obstacle to be able to being able to accomplish those? Well, you know, I, I think one of the obstacles is uh, you know we have a we don't change much here at the University of Idaho. Uh, it's going to be hard. Uh, to to push energy and to push waste management. That's new. That's a little bit outside the box. I think uh, the, my goals on distance education are very difficult. I mean, it's nice to say we want to increase the University of Idaho's enrollment uh, by having half of that growth come from distance education students. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we can do our part as faculty and develop a really good intriguing course. But we have to have marketing programs and we have to have programs that are priced, that are priced appropriately for the public. So I think it's really hard putting all of these things together. I mean, I can do things locally from, from an environmental uh, science department, but in, in, a lot of these things are university-wide. This is a university, uh, we've got faculty from every college on the university involved in this, and, it, and it's really hard to, to really make an impact. So something like marketing, how, how is that done now for the program? Well, on a distance education basis, the university uh, uh, basically has said that they will market the program. So the faculty are coming with a, a, a list of courses that are already existing that they would like to develop on an online basis. The university says, we will do the cost analysis we will provide the money to teach those courses for a couple times. Uh, we will do the marketing. We will do this stuff. But we've got to make sure that they follow through on that because we need the world's best marketing program to, uh, to sell our stuff. So, I mean, a lot of other things have to, have to be part of the picture. We can't live in a, in a little silo and uh, be successful. None of your goals were related to graduate education. I assume that was intentional, or you, I don't know what's happened in the enrollment, whether it's also leveled out or declined. Okay, that's a really good comment. Uh, I, I really believe in graduate education. Uh, I think graduate education is very important. We have a lot of faculty engaged in graduate education, but I don't see that as a weakness of the program right now. I see that. The uh, graduate education, we have lots of involved faculty, we have lots of students working on graduate degrees. That's a strength. And basically faculty run the graduate program. Let's face it, uh, not, a, not an interdisciplinary program. It's faculty that run that. If faculty feel engaged in the program, they're more likely to train more graduate students. And I just let graduate education out of there, not because I don't consider it important, but because I consider it be one of the, the strengths of the program right now. I, I'm trying to address four areas, and I think that where we could we could we could go up a few rungs. Yep. Rachel. Um, other programs at the university have things such as uh, Model UN for International Studies or Design Team for Engineering majors, which really fosters collaboration among the undergraduate students in that program. How do you plan to increase collaboration among the undergraduate and environmental science students? Well, I think that, uh, you know, we've done some things in the past, and they've been spin-offs. The Sustainability Center was the environmental science program, and it was so successful, it's basically university-wide. I, I think that undergraduate students have participated in things like soil, soil students and things like that. And I think we want to continue developing programs, but really the mark of the strength is when a program has been developed, uh, coaxed along by the program, and it becomes university-wide. It's an entity in itself. And uh, I think, you know, we need people to come in and give us their ideas. The best ideas are people that are from outside of the box. Dan. Well, uh, you mentioned this in one of your statements that uh, faculty engagement, and uh, particularly at the undergraduate level, seems to be waning over the years. I mean, you can 
go back three directors ago where they decided, okay, the senior projects are no longer going to be uh, assigned to faculty, and then the uh, movement of, of the program into a specific college is also going to this trend of faculty engagement uh, being coming less and less. And I'm wondering, you know, what do you think uh, you can do to, to reverse that trend and get faculty to become more engaged, especially with the undergrads, because I think that's important that we create an um, exposed undergraduates to a lot of these different disciplinary programs, even though it's an I don't disagree with your statements, Dan. That's kind of why it's a priority with me because I, I've seen that engagement lagging. And um, I think that uh, I, I see your concern about 497. Uh, I don't know what the future holds for 497 when I see the job description. That's my responsibility, so I better be thinking about it. Um, I think that a lot of times we have, we have a, we, in the past, and now we've had very good professional staff who have made a lot of decisions that they thought were correct and really haven't reached out to get the faculty in. And I think that that needs to change. I think we need to engage faculty. I think we need to have some event, at least one event every every month that we bring people together and engage them. Uh, the other thing you mentioned was uh, environmental science program is in a different college. College of Natural Resources. And uh, I think you have to look at it several ways. I think you have to look at it, um, you know, there were a lot of faculty that did not want to move to College of Natural Resources. I've been here 34 years, and there's been at least 25 things that have happened that I didn't like. And, you know, you just kind of have to let it go off your back and try and do the best you can with, uh, with the future. And I think that's the way we have to look at it. And I think that there are some very good things being in CNR. And that's the way I feel that I have to do I have to well the pluses. I say one plus is scholarship money. Environmental science has been part of cause. They've been part of business. They've been part of law. And we have done no good in collecting scholarship money for our students. I think in the College of Natural Resources, we have a good chance uh, with the development people to concentrate some efforts there. Uh, I think that in the last three uh, college uh, complexes we were in, uh, the director really had no direct access to the dean in charge. There's more direct access now because you had deans that were signing papers in the past. I think you have a dean that's very engaged there. And I think that uh, in CNR right now, I think that um, the environmental science program can align some of their best goals with high priority need goals. And I think one of the biggest uh, areas that we share is we want enrollment to go up. And I think that's something mutual for the college that environmental science is presently in and for the environmental science program. And I see that being synergistic. And I see that being as resources will come our way. As, uh, as enrollments go up, and I think that we have to take a look at it that way. I, you know, I housed in College of Nat uh, Natural Resources. Um, it, it's going to be tough on some of these university-wide interdisciplinary programs, but I believe we can have a university-wide interdisciplinary program exist and prosper with the current set. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't apply for this. I know I bounced around your questions, but I'm going to be in the room. Yes? So, have you thought about how you might balance your current responsibilities with the additional responsibilities? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, you know, uh, I guess I would kind of go back to why did I apply for this job? And, um, it's a good spot for me to apply for this job for two or three reasons. First of all, I figure up I'm three to five years out career-wise of thinking from retirement. Three to five years. If it were three years and this were a three-year term, 
I'd retire and I wouldn't have anything to distract me from being the director. Uh, I think I'm at the stage in my career that I can forego uh, developing another large research program. I think uh, research-wise and grant-writing-wise that my efforts need to be concentrated on doing something interdisciplinary for environmental science. So I can get rid of those other distractions. I see myself uh, being 50% director and I want to spend the rest of my time teaching. Uh, I spend 40% of my time doing the introductory environmental science course, and I do not want to drop that course. And uh, if it were a matter of me having to drop that course, I would not apply for the director. The other thing is that uh, I applied for this job because I've been part of the program since it initiated in 1993. I came to Marvin Braun and asked her if I could develop the introductory course. So I've been passionate about the program for 23, 24 years, and uh, it's always been high on my priority, this interdisciplinary program. And I feel right now that the uh, program is really at a crossroads. I'm worried that uh, if the program doesn't reinvigorate itself, it could slowly fall apart, and I don't want to see that happen. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my reason for applying for the job. Like my, my, my under my uh, afternoon class. <laughs> this is my new definition of a sleeper <laughs> cell. Our students that are asleep in my 1230 class. <laughs> okay, I, I, although we had a lot of our questions earlier, but, uh, can you tell us a little bit uh, about your, uh, although they, are, you, they were not among the goals, but uh, more about the um, uh, international engagement or uh, hands on research and, and such. Well, I think uh, undergraduate research is really important. Uh, you know, we do have a component uh, in our 497 class. Uh, up until just a few years ago, everybody had to do a research project, and uh, that was very, it was, it was a senior thesis, and I, I think that that is very, very important. Uh, traditionally, we have lots of undergraduate students who have worked in people's labs uh, with specific research projects. I think international opportunities, I think internships are very important. Uh, I would like to see some grant proposals written uh, to uh, gather pockets of money for internships uh, for students in the summer. Uh, I think there's a, a whole host of things that we could do. Uh, you know, environmental science program to me is a, a balanced student between physical, social, and biological science. I think that's the strength of the program. Uh, students have to be blocked. They have to take breadth courses. And that sets the program apart from traditional majors in many other colleges. Um, I, do you have any data on how the environmental science enrollment in undergraduate programs is going nationally? Like you mentioned, we've uh, stabilized or declined slightly which kind of reflects the U of I general enrollment. Uh -huh. But I wondered in the area of not environmental studies, but environmental science programs, how they're doing nationally. I know the data is out there, but I haven't looked at it. Because I, I didn't know whether we're part of a national trend um, with a lot of the things going on about denying some of the science out there. I was interested that you didn't mention climate change at all in your areas, energy and wastewater. See. We have some strengths. We, we have some strengths in geography, okay. and we have a lot of people doing research. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't say climate change is overserved, but, it's, but, it's, but compared to waste management and energy, I think those two areas are really underserved. And Idaho, with the INEL or whatever the acronym is this year, um, you know, there's a lot of expertise in the state. And same thing with waste management. Uh, you know, every community in this country has to reduce their waste stream. And that means it's cheaper uh, to hire somebody to educate people to use less. Those are millions of jobs out there. And I think that's great for environmental science. Okay. 
I think that that's uh, that has a balance between the sciences and education. There's a lot to be enthusiastic about the program. Uh, one thing I mentioned in the interview, uh, I was reading an article about the University of Montana. And the University of Montana is in the same straits that the University of Idaho is right now. They've got declining enrollment, they're cutting budgets, and I think if you look at the data really close, these mid-level rural universities have a dilemma. The cost of education is so high these days, students are not really migrating to these schools because there aren't a lot of part-time job opportunities. And I think that's kind of maybe the university's overwriting problem. You know, it's easy to sit in our office and say, central recruiting screwed us over again. They didn't, they couldn't bring in the number of students. But I think that there's demographics out there that put us at a disadvantage. From a science standpoint, you know, I, I have lots of opinions. And <laughs> that's bad news. But as a science standpoint, I remember that uh, back in uh, before the year 2000. The university had a very simple mission, the residential campus of choice. We haven't had good mission statements, open fences, open minds, stuff like that. It doesn't say anything to students. And uh, you know, I'd like to see the sciences on this campus get together and come up with a science slogan and a couple other areas on this campus come up with a couple slogans. And we can market ourselves with three slogans maybe the place where science and natural resources, people manage science and natural resources, things like that. I'd like to see us try and come up with some slogans and market to those slogans. Jeannie. All of your goals, I want the goals will take some leadership, and I'd like to address what you feel is your leadership style. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I think uh, you know. I think the best leadership style is leading by example. I think um, I like to do things sequentially. Uh, I think you're more efficient doing things sequentially and focus on certain things. I know that uh, you know there's challenges when you're interdisciplinary and everybody else has a different boss. And I'm really nobody's boss except your boss. You. <laughs> Everybody else has their own boss, and a boss above them, and a boss above them. So you know you have to uh, you have to entice people to do things. You have to have the best programs so people want to be come involved. Sorry, it's not <laughs> <laughs> Max, do you have any questions from Idaho Falls? Um, I could probably come up with one. Um, I'm, I'm interested in your idea of monthly activities for faculty. I wonder if you have any examples of the type of activity that you think would get faculty who are all very, very, very busy that would actually get them to come and engage with uh, environmental science. Well, you know, the old tradition was potluck lunches or stuff like that, but that's not really be, becoming engaged academically. Uh, you know, I think that uh, at one time we did a pretty good job uh, with our joint seminar series. series. Um, I think that, you know, we need to put together some interdisciplinary seminar series and uh, have fa faculty present every week and uh, for them to come up with different topics. I think that's one little thing that can be done. I think the other thing is engaging faculty in uh, writing interdisciplinary grants to improve the degree. I think that we need to engage faculty from all the colleges we can. I mean, that's that's our strength. We've got every college involved in the program. And I think that we also have to be open to faculty coming to us with ideas that we are willing to provide some of the resources in time uh, to help write these grant proposals. Uh, this is a good time uh, to go to foundations and, and to get some of these interdisciplinary grants. Now that we've got a program with a 20 plus year tracker. I 
I have no uh, magic bullet. I think we just have to do it through hard work. Okay, are there any other questions from the audience? All right, we'll okay, thank you for your time.